Hello everyone. Today is May 23rd, 2022. I want to speak to you about your resting heart rate, okay? How it is connected to helping you live longer, okay? Let, let, me, let me start from the beginning. Um, in my 20s, around in the mid 80s, in my 20s, I read an I don't know where I read the article, but I read an article either in a magazine or a newspaper about Chuck Norris. The actor Chuck Norris, he's a karate expert, and that his heart rate was like 45, you know, and and people were making a big thing out of this. I mean, I didn't know anything about what the heart rate was, but I began studying, that's when I began studying about the heart rate, and I realized a low heart rate is extremely important for health. I didn't know it could make you live longer, but I knew it was important for your health, okay, as you get older. Okay, so since then, I've been training to lower my heart rate. Uh, I don't know where I was in the 60s, 60-something, and over the years, you know, I watch my diet, I don't smoke, I, I don't do any drugs, none, I don't, I, you know, I, I live a healthy life my whole life, and I lowered my heart rate to around 48 in my 20s, and then I didn't, I didn't follow, I didn't keep measuring it, but anyhow, in the last six months, I bought a Garmin watch, okay, and I connected to my app. And I've been following my heart rate. I do a lot of running, hit, you know, I, 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 I meditate, believe it or not, I meditate a lot. I, it's not like meditation, but I do call progressive muscle relaxation. From my toes all the way to my head. A little bit of time, I relax every part of my body. Because that helps me lower my heart rate. Uh, I, I, I eat a lot of curcumin. That helps lower your heart rate. But anyway, I don't want to get into that right now. I just want to show you, I want to connect to my app to show you that I am not playing. Uh, I lower my heart, my heart rate. I started following my heart rate September 2021. It was around 51, between 45 and 51 back then. And I started training harder uh, to lower it. And I got it down all the way to 37. Right now, that's what it is. I'm between 37 and 42. It fluctuates between there. So I lowered it. And I'm going to show you how your heart rate predicts, can predict how long you're going to live. You know, uh, a lot of these longevity experts, they talk about um, the hallmarks of aging, you know, cellular senescence. Telling me a reduction, attrition, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, proteostasis, uh, different theories. But now one of them mentions heart rate. Okay, heart rate is a predictor of how long you will live. Okay, and I'm going to show you evidence. But before I do this, let me show you my app. So here's my app. Please take check it out, and you can see how much. I mean, I have the heart rate of a marathon runner, but I'm not a marathon runner, but I lowered it to even lower than a marathon runner. And uh, those cyclists, those professional cyclists, they, they, they have heart rates in their mid-30s, upper 30s, lower 40s. Well, anyway, that's what my pulse rate is. Not because I train, well, I do train. I train like, I train like an animal. I don't overdo it, but I watch... I train very hard, and I always concentrated on the pulse rate because I knew, I knew the lower your pulse rate is, the healthier you are. Okay, the average athlete has around 60 beats per minute, between 55 and 60 beats per minute. The average athlete, the average pulse rate is between I think 60 and 100 for the average person. And I'm going to show you how all this is connected to longevity. Okay, first let me show you the app. Take a look at the app. Here it is, right here. Today's March 23rd, 2022, 10.55 a.m. I am recording my uh, phone screen. And this is my Garmin app connected to my uh, Garmin phone that I wear 24 hours a day. I want to show you my resting heart rate. This is my account. Okay. As you can see, I also do a lot of walking. 
But I wanted to speak about my wrestling heart rate. And uh, you can see it's 39 at the present. Uh, this morning it was 39. Present is 46. My sleep. Now I want to go to my all-time heart rate. The last seven days. The last seven days. See, it's been steady. 39, 37, 41. It fluctuates between like 41 and 39. As low as 37 per minute. And this is four weeks. 39 average. Rest and pulse rate. In the last four weeks. You can see. Flux rates from 37 to 42. In the last four weeks. Okay. I'm gonna go I started in September. I started wearing the Garmin, and you can see the blue line in the graph slowly declining. That's my pulse rate. It's declining even further. Okay, the red is the max. But as you know, I'm going to scroll down so you can see this. I've been watching my heart rate, resting heart rate, since September. See that? Let me go back. One second. Okay. Scroll back down. As you can see in September of 2021, it was around 45, high of 51. And then it's been steadily, steadily declining because I've been training to de decrease my resting heart rate. I have nothing wrong with my heart. I'm personally doing this. I'm training to decrease it. And there's a reason for this. It's a predictable longevity. The lower the heart rate, the longer you may live. I mean, there's studies on this. Anyway, here it goes. As you can see, there's more here. 37 beats per minute. 39 beats per minute. Yesterday was 37 beats per minute. But I ran. I did some running yesterday. I just wanted to show everyone that I train to lower my resting pulse rate. And there's a reason. Very, very good predictor of longevity and health span. Have a good day. I am back. So you just saw my app that my pulse rate, some days is as low as 37, 38, 39, 41 around around flux rates around those numbers there okay the thing is the thing is i notice if i overtrain normally it stays around 38 37 but if i overtrain my pulse rate jumps two or three points and that's when i know i overtrained i need a little extra rest the pulse rate is telling me this so um like if, you're, if i'm stressed my pulse rate the next day is up two or three points and i have to in other words, I use I use it as a gauge. If there's something wrong, okay. When my pulse rate jumps two, three points, there's something wrong. But anyway, that's another story. Now I want to show you how scientists show that your heart rate is connected to your to your lifespan. Scientists are aware that a resting heart rate well known to be beneficial for health, okay? Unhealthy diets, stress, medications, drugs, alcohol, illness can increase our heart rate, okay? And keep it up for 24 hours or even much longer, okay? The health benefits of a lower heart rate are felt throughout our body, believe it or not. It, it, this includes weight loss, heart health, and even inflammatory diseases, okay? But, but, can it help us live longer? Can a lower heart rate do this? Okay, let's take a look. Heart rates fluctuate minute by minute. Okay, the beats per minute depend on if you are standing, lying down, activity level, stress level. The heartbeat slows during prolonged rest of sleep, and that reflects the resting heart rate. Heart rate. This is what we're looking for. Okay, we need to find this out. Having a high resting heart rate is associated with atherosclerosis sudden death, increased likelihood of dying from cardiovascular disease. 
A higher heart rate means more stress. Okay, every time the book the blood pulses, okay, the artery walls are mildly, mildly stressed. Okay, a faster heartbeat gives the coronary arteries less time to fill with blood. Okay, this can result in an imbalance between heart's capacity to provide oxygen and heart's need for it. This is just one way. Okay, now here's a study from 2015. Okay. It's called the heart rate, life expectancy, and the cardiovascular system therapeutic considerations. Okay, and you can see it says heart rate is related to survival in apparently healthy individuals and in patients with different underlying cardi cardiovascular diseases. A decrease in heart rate due to therapeutic interventions may result in an increase in survival. Okay, so what it's saying is that the lower the heart rate. It increases your survival. Uh, 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 uh. You can live longer. Okay. Now here, here's another study from 2019. Okay. And you can see it says rest and heart rate in relation to disease and longevity, past, present, and future. And you can see it says several studies have indicated that low resting heart rate is associated with health and longevity. And conversely, high resting heart rate to be associated with disease and adverse events. Longitudinal studies, that means long-term studies, have shown a clear association between an increase in heart rate over time and adverse events, which means death, okay? Just so you know, there are studies that indicate this. With all this in mind, I suggest, you know, this is just my opinion, that you should strive to lower your heart rate, okay? Because if you lower your heart rate, it's a sign that you could add years to your life. You could add even up to 20 years to your life. The thing is, you can't smoke. Smoking raises it. Uh, you can't do drugs. You can't do steroids. All these guys that work out, because it, 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 it hurts your heart rate, okay? You need to run or bike ride. Uh, I mean, do it cons consistently. Be consistent about this. Do hit workouts, okay? Uh, do compound sets. When you work out, do five different exercises in a row. That's This all helps. But more important, again, this is just my opinion. You should try some kind of meditation. Uh, I, like I said, I do <clears throat> progress, 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 progressive muscle relaxation. I mean, that really helps me, okay? The thing is, you know, you want to take uh, NMN. Uh, there's no magic pill, man. There's no magic pill. that make You're not going to take a pill, and it's not anytime soon, and it's going to make you live long. you got to help. you got to live a healthy lifestyle, and you got to try to lower your heart rate, okay? Now, I'm going to leave you with a video from nutritionfacts.org, okay? And this video explains how the pulse rate is connected to longevity and it shows you should don't you don't have to lower it as low as mine you know you don't have to lower it that low but you should strive to lower your heart rate to at least one beat per minute per second excuse me so 60 beats per minute can help you live longer okay i'm closing with this video this video will explain it even better than me okay how your heart rate is connected to your longevity and lifespan. Okay, it's crucial, man. It's crucial. I hope this helps. Hope this information helps. Remember, it's not just about NMN, epigenin, NR. You need to live a healthy lifestyle. You can live to 100 years. I'm going for it. I'm going for it, man. I've been getting ready for this since I was in my teens. And I'm not going to stop now. And I wish all of you the best of luck. I hope this information helped. If it did, please subscribe if, if you're here for the first time. Um, and if you like the video, please please hit like for the YouTube algorithm, as they say. Okay? I appreciate it. Okay? And um, I'll see you in my next video. Have a good evening. Have a good day, wherever you're at. And I'll leave you with this video in closing. 
and he's going to explain to you in detail how it's connected. Have a good day. Do people with slower hearts live longer lives? And indeed, from the evidence accumulated so far, we know that a high resting heart rate, meaning how fast our heart beats when you're just sitting at rest, is associated with an increased in mortality in the general population, as well as those with chronic disease. A fasting heart rate may lead to a faster death rate. Faster resting heart rates are associated with shorter life expectancies, considered a strong independent risk factor for heart disease and heart failure. Uh, you can see how those with the higher heart rates are about twice as likely over the next 15 years to experience heart failure. In middle-aged people and older people, in men and women, our heart rate is, if our heart rate is up you know, 24 hours a day, even when we're sleeping, all that pulsatile stress may break some of the elastic fibers within the arterial wall, causing our arteries to become stiff. It doesn't allow enough time for our arteries to relax between beats, and so the faster our heart, the stiffer our arteries. But there are all sorts of theories how an increased resting heart rate could decrease our time on Earth. Regardless, this relationship is now well recognized. It's not just a marker of an underlying pathology. It's not merely a marker of inflammation. Uh, the reason it's important to distinguish a risk factor from a risk marker is that if you control the risk factor, you control the risk. But if it's just a risk marker, it wouldn't matter if we brought our heart rate down. But now we even have evidence from drug trials, now that there actually are medications that just affect heart rate, that lowering our heart rate lowers our death rate. It's now been shown in at least a dozen trials so far. Basically, we don't want our heart to be beating more than about one beat per second at rest. You can measure your pulse right now. For the maximum lifespan, the target is like one beat a second to beat the clock. 